Hi, everybody. This is Hondo Carpenter. I am your Sports Illustrated beat writer covering the Las Vegas Raiders. It is great to be on with you today. Thank you for joining me. We are going to have a really good day. It's, I just enjoy getting to speak to you. We're not going to be answering emails, no guests. I'm going to be giving you some observations that I have um, of the Raiders offseason. This would include OTAs, but it's all of it. And I'm going to um, – I think it's going to express to you a lot and bring a lot to you in focus um, about what's going on. I, I've always viewed, and I've always said this to you, I view my job as to give you what you can't get as a fan, to take you on the inside. Um, before we do, I always try once a month. Um, I prefer to do it once a week. Sometimes I get busy, to be honest, I forget, and I'm not a proud of that. But I try to at least once a month just take a minute and tell all of you how much I appreciate you, how grateful I am for you. Um, my wife and I went out to dinner with some dear friends, Greg and Jill, um, over the weekend. And we he made a comment to me. He goes, oh, I'm doing exponentially well. And I said, oh, that's good. And he started cracking up. He goes, I'm making fun of in your podcast. You always say we're growing exponentially. So I won't say that. Tip of the hat to my buddy Greg and his wife, Jill. I'm going to say we're growing so fast that I don't like you to not know that I understand there are lots of ways for you to get Raider information. Um, and I greatly appreciate that you uh, come here and you allow me to give it to you. I'm not entitled to you reading our articles every day at si.com forward slash NFL forward slash Raiders. Um, by the way, we produce a minimum of 10 pieces of content a day. We did 15 written pieces yesterday, multiple videos, reels, um, all of it. It's all free because of you guys. Because of you guys. You like it, you share, you subscribe. I appreciate it. Thank you. Please don't stop. And um, but you can, there's a lot of places for you to go to get information. And I just sincerely want you to know that. I, I try to take time at least once a month, but to just tell you thank you and to let you know that from my family to yours, we appreciate you. So five things that have really stood out this Raider offseason, and, and I'm, I'm primarily looking since the draft, if I were being honest, but five big areas. Now, the first one, um, I'm, I'm not going to tell you the name of where I got it, but a new Raider player told a member of a former of the organization they were part of before joining the Raiders this offseason, um, who I'm very close to something about the Raiders. And they meant it, and I got their permission, and I'm not going to use the players, so they're fine. But this person who my wife and I are very close with was talking uh, to a new Raider. And they said, you know, how do you like it? And this is what the guy told our friend. And I want you to hear it because I think it's phenomenal. I have talked more and spent more time with AP than I ever did in my entire time with, and he named the old coach. It's absolutely unbelievable. He knows my family situation. He asked about it. Yeah, we talk about football but only like five to 10% of it. This is pretty cool. This is pretty amazing. This is pretty special. And that's from a, a new Raider talking to a member of the organization he was part of before joining the Raiders. And that has stood out to a lot of the new Raiders. It stood out to a lot of the rookies. It has stood out to the veterans. Just that AP sees it as a family and treats it like the family. Now, there's no doubt he's the boss. Growing up in my family, there was no doubt that my dad was the boss. No doubt at all. And there's no doubt with the Raiders, AP's the boss. But he's invited these people to be part of his family. And there is a great sense of welcoming 
Um, the veterans of the Raiders have done a magnificent job of making rookies and free agents feel welcome. And not just the superstars like Christian Wilkins. There's other guys that are role players, undrafted free agents. Um, I was speaking to uh, a family member of a UDFA who I happen to have a relationship with. And they were telling me uh, how impressed their family member was with, you know, how the, the veterans treat them, how they, you know, embrace them, how they act towards them. And I think that's a very important key detail. I'm going to get into this um, in a minute and my second point and even more. But I think it's important to understand, AP understands, he sets expectations. Nick Saban uh, said to me multiple times, my wife's bringing me a cup of coffee. Thank you, sweetheart. My Nick Saban said this to me several times. You inspect what you expect. So if you don't expect something, then you don't have to be inspecting. But if you expect something, you better be inspecting. And Nick used to say that he sets the tone for everything. If he wants his coaches to be demanding, he's got to be demanding on his coaches. If he wants a particular detail stress, he's going to stress it to the coaches. And, and that's in every area. Nick, in my opinion, is the greatest college football coach to ever coach, ever. All that he did inside of, of scholarship limitations and everything else is phenomenal. And he used to tell his guys, he, and, and Nick was big on this, I'd rather hire great recruiters who are good coaches than good recruiters who are great coaches. Because great recruiters already start off with better players. And there was a sense of expectations when there was a, a, a recruit on campus. And even if he wasn't your recruit, you knew who was on campus. You knew their name. You greeted them. You, you talked to them. You stopped. You talked to them. And AP is setting that standard. And I think it's fascinating. Um. I think it's fascinating. Now, everyone knows I have tremendous respect for John Gruden. And John Gruden was big on veterans. Big on them. Didn't mean he didn't like rookies. I'm not saying that or other, other guys. They, but they had to prove they belong. Um, Josh McDaniels was just all about the process. Now, Rich Bisaccia and AP, there are so many similarities there. It's stunning. I mean, I think the only difference between the two, look, well, there's a few differences, but not much. They're very similar coaches. And Rich did a really good job also setting the standard. And AP is extremely respectful to the coaches. He's extremely respectful to the players, but very demanding of both. And they foul that. And there's just, I thought that you would get an interesting kind of thought about that. Because that stuff gets out into the league. I mean, Christian Wilkins wanted to play for Antonio Pierce. That was a big deal to him. That's why he signed quickly. Remember, I kept telling you, hey, there are some guys that want to come here. Okay, he wanted to be here. You know, the Raiders paid him great money and they gave him market value. He could have probably gotten more. I don't think he would have gotten a ton more, but he could have gotten more, but he wanted to be here. That was important to him. And again, AP sets that standard. The second thing is camaraderie. Now I want to go back and explain a couple things. I, this is my fifth year covering the Raiders. And um, they have never had locker room issues. The guys have always gotten along. Um, but there, you know, there there were groups. And but 
I've told you only a couple of times where there are people on this team that I did not like. I, I, I've been very adamant. Um, only a couple. We'll leave it there. And that's truthful. And But there's not one guy on this team I don't like right now. Not one. Good guys. But camaraderie. Now, I'm going to tell you how I heard this. Had a player tell me, it's like guys don't want to leave. Now, I want you to think about that. They're just hanging around in the locker room. They're joking. They're laughing. They're talking. Guys are talking about game planning and family. And, and it's just, it's it's been a very different place. And now, I want to make this really clear. And I would tell you if there had been locker room issues. There were frustrations in the past with some players, not all, um, with Darren Waller. They felt like he didn't play when he could have. I, I don't know one person that hated Darren. So don't take it as, oh, my God, they hated Darren. They didn't. But there were some frustration there. There were frustration with Josh Jacobs when he came in and, and guys didn't think he was in the best shape. There was frustration with Josh Jacobs last year. Some of them thought he could have played at the end. Okay, Just frustration. Didn't mean they didn't like him. Didn't mean they didn't love him and didn't care for him. It was just frustration. Now you got guys hanging out, sticking around, and they're not, man, I'm in a quick hurry to get out of the building. And there's camaraderie. It's different. Now, I know because I understand this and I don't go listen to them, that there are people who take what I say in the podcast and run with it. That's fine. I don't have a problem with that. But if you're going to run with it, at least be truthful. I'm not implying that there was disdain or division, but it wasn't like it is now. And it's their very close group extremely close and um i i i know it has surprised some of the new coaches i think it surprised some of the new players the camaraderie is different third um i want to talk about aiden o'connell accuracy and size first of all he is genuinely bigger mm -hmm. bulkier i told this before and and I hope I, I think he'll laugh at this, but if you would have saw Aiden O'Connell last year and didn't know he was Aiden O'Connell, you would have probably thought he was an accountant. No offense to accountants, especially mine, Jeff Rochester. Love you, brother. Um, but that is the kind of the way they roll and the way he rolled. And he has come in, and, and in my opinion, um, I don't know that that's a right, but I, I would say maybe lost a little baby fat. He wasn't fat at all. So take it from a fat guy. He wasn't fat, but he just looks sculpted. And he was in there every day with Max and those guys. So that's not a surprise. And he was already a very accurate passer. And he's more accurate. I put some videos last couple of weeks on Twitter of him throwing the football where he's rolling stop, and just on the run, putting the ball in a net in a small window. He's impressed a lot of people. I was told that he threw a ton of balls uh, this off season. I don't know who he threw with, but that he had to have for his accuracy to go from good to great. Now he was already exceptional uh, without, you know, turning the ball over. Nine touchdowns, one interception in the last five games. But his accuracy is even better. And, the, you know, they're they're going to expect the D to be good, but you can't expect the D to score touchdowns every game. I know what the game plan was in Kansas City last Christmas, and I've heard some people say, well, he didn't have to throw the ball a whole lot for them to win in Kansas City. You're right, he didn't. But I know what the game plan was. And they were going to have him take some shots, but they didn't need him to. 
Remember, Al's motto is just win. It's not just win sexy. It's not just appease the critics. It's just win. If all the media hates it and you win, that's all that matters. A lot of people talk about how sexy the Cowboys look. They don't win. When you're winning, the Raiders are on that upswing. That's a big deal. And I I have been I have been surprised. I had high expectations for Aiden. I'll, I'll go a step farther. I have high expectations for Aiden and Gardner. And both have been better than I thought that they would be. And that's good for the Raiders. Next, uh I want to talk about the defense. We all know how talented this defense is and how good it is. Now, if you didn't see the video, I asked uh, Patrick Graham about being a tinkerer, and he admitted it. Um, I have been told that the defense looks even better. Now, there are no pads, and remember what I've told you. Everything I'm giving you here is non-pad related. Because football's played in pads. If you pay attention, the University of Michigan wins the Heisman Trophy every June. They've got some player, oh, we're going to win the national, we're going to win the Heisman, and they never do. All respect to Charles Woods. That man is a beast. Tip of the hat. Nothing but respect. I may be a Spartan. Charles Woodson is the finest Wolverine to have ever played. And in my opinion, the finest Big Ten, second best Big Ten player of all time. Not first, but second. And so, but that defense has some new wrinkles. And I'm not going to talk about them. First of all, I don't have enough information to talk about them intelligently. I certainly have some conceptual thoughts that I've been shared, but would do nothing to hurt the Raiders. But conceptually, I really like some of the tinkering. And I like that the defense has come out and set a standard. There's been no cheap hits because nobody's in pads. But they have clearly made the offense aware we're here and we're really good. And uh, I was told by someone who observed practice that they were stunned at how good Christian Wilkins looked and how much time him and Max, you know, got in the backfield. No pads. So you expect that. But I'm going to tell you, Christian Wilkins, Tyree Wilson, and all of the other cast of defensive line, I'm going to make this prediction right now. And you can write it down. I am predicting the Raiders will have the best defensive line in the National Football League next year. Write it down. I don't even know what today's date is. I think it's June 3rd. I, it's sometime after midnight, so I think it's June 3rd. Best defensive line in the NFL. And that defense is, is going to be really, really good. Better than last year, and they were already number one. I think they're going to be a lot better. Now let's go to the next one, the coaching staff. And I really want to spend some time here. Because the coaching staff um, has really won a ton of respect from the players. Now, I want to say this. Most of Josh McDaniel's staff was liked. There were a couple that weren't, but most were liked. There isn't one player. I have not heard one complaint about any assistant. Now, they are very demanding like AP. Demanding. But they are so personal. 
and know their guys and have made it a family. And this is what goes back to what I talked about with Antonio Pierce. Is they set the standard of expectations. We are a family. And these guys have done a terrific job of, of making that impact. Of teaching. Um, now, Josh McDaniels was a big teacher. I want to give him all the credit in the world. And AP is a big teacher. But where Josh was a, okay, come on, you screwed up. Let's go. We're going to talk about it after practice when we get on tape. Their thing is, hey, we're going fast, but we're going to stop you right here and tell you you screwed up. Here's what you did wrong. This is what I want you to do next. Go. Bam. They correct it on the field. Now, they also have the big screens now that are on the field. So when they get water breaks, they're over there literally watching films on these giant screens. So it's very fascinating, very fascinating how that's working, um, how that's that that's evolving. Is this staff are great teachers, but they have the personal side. And, 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 and being a former player at the NFL level, which Josh McDaniels was not, AP is like, no, we're going to correct it right now. And they do. So there's a lot more correcting out on the field. And then in the classroom, they're still saying, hey, this is where you did this. This is what I corrected on the field. And and I am going to say this. It's all about wins. All of None of this stuff matters if the Raiders lose. And I know that. But I think all of this sets the foundation for winning. And I love the quick correcting. I mean, under Josh McDaniels, we would see some repeated mistakes. Well, when you're correcting, as soon as it happens, you don't see that. Um, I also, and I'm, I'm planning on asking AP about this, um, next week at the, uh, mandatory mini camp, but I've heard some, some, from some players, it seems like a lot of the coaches, no, let's go back. AP was a linebacker coach here. And yet he had relationships with almost all the players at various positions. And I'm hearing that that a lot of these coaches now are building relationship with players outside of their room. That's a big deal. I'm going to go back and tell you a story. I remember once with the Detroit Lions, they had a defensive line coach who his guys ate together, hung out together. And they really were just different. They didn't do much with the rest of the team. It was a click. Okay. You spend so much time with your position coach, that coach, that's easy. AP, every player on the team knew AP and loved AP before AP became the coach, and he wasn't even a coordinator. He made it a point to know that locker room. These coaches are doing that. And I'm going to tell you something. It has the attention of the staff. I mean, of the players. Players have seen it. Uh, I am really looking forward to the players do a anonymous NFLPA uh, every year. They do a survey. I am really looking forward on some of those numbers to see how the Raiders do, because there are some things that in the past they've been dinged about that are not going to be dingable now, and that to me is fascinating. To me. That is AP, again, listening to his locker room. Now, we have more OTA availability tomorrow. We're going to get a lot there. Um, we don't know the players yet, but I can tell you this. Real quickly, I'll tell you the coaches that we're going to be talking to. Um, bear with me, please. I apologize. I don't have it here. So I thought I had it right here, and I don't. So that's on me. That's not on you. Up oh, here it is right here. The coaches we're going to be talking to are uh, Mike Caldwell, 
the run game coordinator and linebacker coach, Ricky Manning, the cornerback coach, and Gerald Alexander, the safety coach. And then, of course, we'll get players. So I am super excited to talk to AP at mandatory minicamp. I'm going to ask him that question. I got a, I got several questions I need to ask him that I think are really important and really super big. And so I hope you're getting this. I hope it's getting down inside of you. Again, all of the reasons I gave you have nothing to do with pads. Because I can't tell you, oh, this running back looks good. Well, he's not getting the snot kicked out of him. And his offensive linemen aren't kicking the snot out of defensive linemen to make holes. So all of that stuff, eh, don't listen to it. Doesn't matter. I'm looking for things that matter without pads. And these do. Please remember to follow me on IG when you go to Hondo SR and X, formerly known as Twitter, when you go to at Hondo Carpenter. And I want to remind you of something. Life is precious. It's just precious. And it doesn't mean at times it's not hard. And I read a survey, I don't know, a year ago, two years ago, in, in the Wall Street Journal. And in the survey, it talked about, I believe the number now, or maybe we will, maybe even been USA Today. I don't, it's one of them. But I think the number was close to 90% of Americans. It wasn't 90, but it was but close to it that said they don't feel like they matter to other people. That's tough. That's tough. When you're trying to live life, which isn't easy all the time, and you think it don't matter to anybody. I just want to say this to you. I don't know all of you. I don't even know 1% of you. I'm not going to pretend like I do. I hope I get to meet you at the tailgates this year. Please look for me. I hope to meet you. But you matter to me. And I want you to know every single day the Carpenter family prays for every one of our listeners and readers. And you matter to us. And you count to us. And sometimes it's just hearing that person say, you matter. I just want you to know you matter. You matter. And if life's tough today, don't quit. Just keep fighting. Keep fighting. Keep moving ahead. Keep going ahead. You're going to be all right. You're a winner. And I believe in you. Thanks, everybody, for listening. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a wonderful day, and God bless you. And uh, don't forget, Father's Day's coming pretty soon. It's a great day. Make sure you make it count for you. All right, buddy, everybody. Bye-bye.